You've probably heard that high school math in China is hard. This is one of the exams that's just taken place. This exam is taken in about half of China. Probably 5 million students would have just sat this exam last week. And we're going to look at the last question. It's a sequences question. Very nice sequences question. There is a bit of reading. Yes, I will translate it into English. And we'll see that the three parts relate quite nicely. And part three certainly is very challenging. But there's hints in part one and two. If you'd like to read the original Chinese, just pause the video now. Otherwise, here's the translation. Let m be an integer. Sequence a1, a2 to a4m plus 2 is an arithmetic sequence with a non-zero common difference. If two terms ai and aj are deleted from the sequence and the remaining four m terms can be separated into m groups, where the four terms in each group form an arithmetic sequence, then call the sequence an ij separable sequence. So it does take a while to get your head around it. Feel free to pause the video read it again or as many times as you like. But part one is to write all ij between one and six for which a1, a2 to a6 form an ij separable sequence. So part one is just really testing that we understand the definitions and what's been given in the question. So if we have a six term arithmetic sequence, we want to remove two terms and be left over with a four term arithmetic sequence. So clearly those four terms must be consecutive. For example, if we remove the first two terms, we'll be left with the last four, which is clearly an arithmetic sequence. Um, likewise, we could remove the last two terms, or we could remove the first and the last term and be left with the four terms in the middle. So the possible values of ij for part one are one, two, five, six, or one, six. For part two, it's a proof question. So if m is three or greater, prove that a1, a2 to a4m plus 2 is a 2, 13 separable sequence. Before diving into this proof, it's probably useful to notice that we can simplify this problem by just considering the sequence of natural numbers, 1, 2, 3, etc. This sequence is ij separable, then any sequence a1, a2, etc. will be ij separable. You could just apply a scale factor to your sequence to make the common difference 1, maybe add or subtract a constant, and all the differences will be affected equally. So they'll either both be ij separable or neither will be. All right, so let's start from m is equal to three and just consider the sequence of natural numbers from one to 14. We want to remove two and 13 and this then the remaining 12 terms should be separable, meaning we can separate them into three uh, subsequences which are arithmetic. So, I mean, how could we do that? If we try it with a common difference of two, say, um, and take the sequence one, three, five, seven, um, in order to get to 14, we'll have to take eight, 10, 12, 14. But then what are we left with? The leftover four terms are now not an arithmetic sequence. So that doesn't work. Um, what else could we try is maybe a common difference of three. If we take the sequence one, four, seven, 10, then maybe working backwards from the top term, um, 14, 11, 8, 5, then we're left over with 3, 6, 9, 12, and that's great, okay, because these are three arithmetic sequences, so we've shown that it definitely does work when m is equal to 3, but we need to prove this for m is 3 or greater. So what about if m is 4, for example? Well, now we would have 18 terms in our sequence. Well, if we just <laughs> stick another four numbers on the end, well, 15, 16, 17, and 18, four consecutive integers there, definitely are an arithmetic sequence, common difference one, and the other three we already show, the other three arithmetic subsequences. So now we have four arithmetic subsequences. So when m is equal to four, this sequence is separate. And that same trick is gonna work no matter what m is, because we just keep on adding four terms every time. So we can always use the same first three subsequences and then for the terms 15, 16, all the way up to 4m plus 2, no matter how many of them there are, it'll always be multiple of 4. So we can separate these into uh, m minus 3 subsequences of four consecutive integers each. Now for part three, if two random numbers i and j are selected, let pm be the probability that a1, a2 to a4m plus 2 is an ij separable sequence prove that pm is greater than one over eight. And of course, what we've done in part one and two is gonna be useful here, but we're trying to find a probability. 
So if we think about what is going to be the denominator of that probability, well, that is the total number of choices for i and j. So the number of choices that we'll have will be 4m plus 2, choose 2. So we can calculate that as 4m plus 2 times 4m plus 1 divided by 2. The tricky thing is going to be working out the numerator. How many pairs i, j do we have for each value of m? So to work this out, um, considering small cases first, in part one, we already did the case when m is equal to one, that was our six integer sequence, and we had three choices i, j there. And what we showed in part two, or part of what we showed in part two, was that once we have a solution, say 2, 13, um, for m is equal to three, then that same solution, 2, 13, works for all values of m greater than three, because we can just, we're, all we're doing for larger values of m is adding on four terms. We just stick those four terms on the end, which obviously form an arithmetic sequence. So if we say let S, M be the solutions, the solution pairs I, J for, for one value of M, then any elements of S, M will also be elements of S, M plus one. Because as M increases by one, we just get four extra terms. We stick those on the end of our sequence and we have an arithmetic subsequence of four consecutive integers. All right, so we want to count all the solutions for the case when M is equal to two. So if we look at our sequence of integers from one to 10, and we already have the solutions 1, 2, 1, 6, and 5, 6. Now, what else do we have? Um, well, clearly we can take the first and last, so 1, 10. And the eight integers in the middle, we can split into two arithmetic sequences. Um, or we take the last two terms, 9, 10, and take the first eight integers. Or we could take 5, 10, and then leave these two groups of four consecutive integers. And that obviously would work too. Now we have six solutions so far. There's actually one more. And it's similar to what we did in part two, actually. So in part two, we looked at 2, 13, which was the second term and the second last term. We can do a similar thing here by removing 2, 9. And we would have then two arithmetic sequences as 1, 3, 5, 7, and 4, 6, 8, 10. So that gives seven choices, seven solutions, uh, seven pairs i, j. Out of a total, the total number of pairs there is 10 choose 2. That's 45. So seven out of 45 well, it's more than one out of eight, so that's good. And we want to show that you know, there's always going to be more than one out of eight for any M value. So probably what we want to do is be a little bit more systematic about the way we represent our solutions. So I think a nice way of doing that is if we represent I like on an X axis, J on the Y axis, and then think about our solutions. So the solution one, two, uh, we can put down here, then one, six, and then five, six over here. And these were the possible solutions within the 15 possible points in this sort of triangle here. That's the case when m is equal to 1. Um, when m, m is equal to 2, where then we have also the solutions 1, 10, 5, 10, 9, 10, also 2, 9 here. And we, those were the seven possible solutions in this triangle here, which were out of 45 possible pairs there. I'll do one more triangle. So when m is equal to 3, we also have solutions uh, 1, 14, 5, 14, 9, 14, 13, 14. But then we also have 2, 13, as we showed in part 2. And we're going to have one more, which is 6, 13. We can see this is going to be the solution because we basically take what we had from um, 2, 9. And by shifting those sequences up by four places, then we're just left with one, two, three, four at the bottom of the new sequence, and that's all good. So we have another solution. We can generalize this to say that if i, j is part of the solution set S, M, then i plus four, j plus four will be part of the solution set S, M plus one, because we can add four to all the subsequences for the i, j solution, and then we'll be left over with the first four consecutive integers, which is obviously another arithmetic subsequence. So with that recurrence relation, well, we can then build up from the initial solutions we have, um, generalize and get more solutions every time, like going this way. In this diagram, we've really got solutions of two types of highlighting these solutions, where i is like um, 4k plus 1 and j is 4k plus 2. And then we've got these solutions like 2, 9, 2, 13, where i is 4k plus 2 and j is 4k plus 1. 
And the number of those solutions is each going to be a triangular number. You can see it there in the diagram. Each time m increases by 1, the number of each solution type also increases by 1. So we can use this to actually count up the number of solutions. And we'll do that in a minute. Uh, but first, as far as a proof, we, we do need to say, like, where does the first, the leftmost solution in each case come from? So for the yellow highlighted terms, well, like 1, 10, 1, 14, we're just taking the first and the last. So i is equal to 1, j is equal to 4m plus 2, and then we'll have 4m consecutive integers in the middle, which we can split into m groups of 4, 4 consecutive integers. For the second case, the bl highlighted blue there, so like the 2, 9, 2, 13, well, we need to show that 2, uh, i is equal to 2, j is equal to 4m plus 1 is always a solution. We can do that by building on what we had in part 2. So when m is equal to 3, we took arithmetic sequences with common difference 3. So um, in general, we can take arithmetic sequences with common difference m. So 1, 1 plus m, 1 plus 2m, 1 plus 3m. And then we don't want 2, but we can use um, 2 plus m, 2 plus 2m, 2 plus 3m, 2 plus 4m. Then 3, 3 plus m, 3. Then we can count up our solutions using our triangular numbers formula or sum of consecutive integers. And when we divide that by the denominator we had from above, we find that the fraction we get is in fact always greater than 1 over 8. <laughs> Okay, nice question. Do not envy the students who had to sit that exam, though. Well done.